Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small businesses. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Geardy from Matty G Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community, 18 Kent Street West in downtown Lindsay. We are here with Kelly from Purple House. Kelly, tell us about you and tell us about Purple House. Hi, Kelly Murphy, and I live in Little Britain, and I have a business here, two businesses, Purple House and Care Crew. Purple House is an in um, a dementia care home facility that we're opening up locally, and it will also have respite, so it'll be a, a secure home with 24-hour supervision, um, care as needed, and um, it'll be in Lindsay, and up to 10 bedrooms and it'll be it's just a home it's a beautiful home and um, hopefully we will be able to provide beautiful food and wonderful people in there to help care um, daily activities and um, just a a good environment for people to thrive and live and uh, live with dignity and respect and then the other business is the care crew which would go into people's homes and um, provide care if they want to stay and age in place why Purple House? <laughs> <laughs> Why Purple House? Um, I guess purple, it encompasses a whole bunch of different um, meanings and, and disorders. And we wanted to show that, uh, well, one of the one of the concepts we came up with is the color of the queen is purple and dignity. Mm-hmm. And um, that was one of the reasons for purple. But also for dementia, it encompasses... Um, uh, I think epilepsy, it encompasses a whole bunch of different disorders, diseases, and we wanted to show that we are not um, just about one, so we will care for anybody with autism, for um, um, any kind of, whether it's dementia, autism, um, epilepsy, anybody post-op, we are there for everybody. So. Yeah, it's interesting having gotten to know you a bit and working with you the idea that Purple House came from the concern of dementia, yeah. but the ability to help so many other people, I think is really cool. Um, I also find it interesting, like just definition wise, like respite care yeah. being the word. And I don't know why, I just don't like the word. I don't <laughs> like the vocabulary, like the, the verbiage for that. Yeah. I don't know, it sounds harsh or cold or something. And it's yeah, just, I think it's like it sounds confusing mm. to me when I think of respite care. It it doesn't adequately uh, describe what it actually is, or maybe how easy it is to. Or maybe it's not that it's easy to get, but how it should be kind of part of your regular routine if you're a caregiver. Yeah, and it is twofold. It's it's not necessarily just for the person that has the problem. It's for the person that's the caregiver as well. Yeah. So to spell them off, because as the person providing the care, they get tired. Mm. And they're also, um, there's a little bit of, uh, there's guilt. And there's a compassion there that where they feel that they need to be the ones that are providing the care to their loved one. Um, they feel, ob- not obligated, but they feel that that's their, their right. And um, they, they don't want to kind of, say I'm, I'm really tired I just need a break so um, I respite is is a struggle for me too I, I find that mm. there should be a better word but, yeah it's still like the universally searched one is respite it is but then you do a little bit of digging there's still lots of others it's like care for yeah. autism cancer stroke all these different ones which is kind of fascinating yeah. and I found like even years ago when I, I've worked kind of within this industry a couple times the last few years. Respite was also getting lumped in with, like, um, hospice, which makes e- no sense. None. <laughs> no, no sense at all. Yeah, I agree with that. One. Although I think, uh, you know, from a consumer standpoint, I'm still not sure I understand what hospice mm. is or means. More palliative. And it's... Yeah. Mm. Uh, or again, just a, I think a consumer education thing. Like unless you are in a position to know these things, you just don't know. So I could see if you are new to 
looking for that and you don't even know what you're looking for, you know, it's scary, right? Like suddenly you become a caregiver and you don't know the, the landscape of healthcare system, what these services are called. So I can see how that gets a little bit confusing mm-hmm. for people. Yeah. Yeah, and then trying to define it to, to make sure that everybody can access the care that they need. So when you do reach it, it's on your website or your social media, trying to make sure that they understand that we're here um, for them in, in all the capacities, post-surgical care, all of that, even pediatric, right? Like when they have a baby and they just they just need a couple hours of sleep. <laughs> like that's, you know, that's really um, a big time right after they have a baby, right? So um, all of those things and... and What's the word or what's the term? What would you be searching for for that? Uh, yeah. I think people don't even search for it because they don't know it exists. Yeah. And now I'm getting into a weird, not weird, but like historical feminism thing where a lot of caregiving falls on women. And when women like post having a baby, people don't even think about that as a time that you would need care. When, of course, yeah, sometimes you just need a few hours to sleep or Mm -hmm. have a shower or just this respite and we're sort of conditioned that people don't need that break let alone know to go look for services that kind of offer it as a regular acceptable thing to do yeah for sure yeah is it all nurses that take care of the people and help out No, so we do have PSWs or personal support workers. We have companions and we have um, um, registered practical nurses Mm. as well as registered nurses. And um, actually looking at uh, some developmental service workers as well. Um, So to just to fill that whole diverse range of of jobs and um, client base that we have. So... Yeah, and we have had um, other other people. We have to get the clients to fill the needs, but um, rec aids and stuff like that that we're we're looking at talking to. So um, for day programs and so, what's the difference between a companion and a PSW? So companions are people like you and I that haven't had that experience or the training to go in. Um, we we would go in and sit with them, have tea. Mm-hmm. go for walks, keep them company. Um, but as far as the bathing goes and medication or any kind of um, uh, trained activity, that wouldn't happen. You couldn't see them um, naked or any of that type of trained practice. PSWs can help with the bathing. They can get um, um, direction and training for meds management Mm -hmm. um and they can get additional uh food handler certificate and additional training for that so so we can provide that with the psw and then the the rpns have even more training for more complexity and then the rns have a higher level of complexity for what kind of screening is there for a companion for all of our staff we have the vulnerable sector check we Mm. have criminal background checks um, they all have to have uh, their, their, their vaccines, their um, like TB tests, um, all of the stuff that would, because we're dealing with vulnerable people, um, we want to make sure that they have all of their um, checks and, and documentation. We also do, um, when, we, when we screen them, we also screen them from a, like a, not an empathy, but a, we do a behavioral test. So we ask them certain questions and how they react and answer um, gives us an idea. That's cool. I'm wondering if there's even an opportunity for volunteers for companions, whether they're like high school and I'm not super for exploiting um, youth and for volunteers, stuff that other people would be being paid for. That's a different conversation, but I still think there's a good opportunity there for just people to volunteer. Like Meg loves old people. <laughs> Right? In a way that I don't have the patience for, right. frankly. She loves it. And she's talked for years about how she'd just love to go and like spend some time with yes. some older people. And I wonder if that's an opportunity absolutely. for you. So Yes, yeah, so we would absolutely love that. We've already gone, um, Allie's gone and 
talk to LCVI students, mm. as well as um, she's going to be speaking with St. Thomas and Weldon as well, um, because they also have that program. I can't remember what the name of the program is. I just had the debrief with Cassidy. Um, but the, yeah, so they they have this program where in grade, the upper grades, grade 11 and 12, they get them into the, the co-op um, program and as well as the volunteer hours. So we've, like she did training and she did quizzes. Um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the home named after? Who's the home named after? And everybody raised their hand and said, Bob, you know, like so. <laughs> yeah, so we would welcome that and we are meeting with Fleming as well to try and get some volunteers out there as well. So, and locals, so any locals, yeah, for sure. Have you had struggles recruiting? Oh, for sure. 200%, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we ha um, tomorrow have a kind of a job fair thing that we're trying to um, get people, we've posted on Indeed, we've posted on social media and website, um, it's just the, the flow isn't there, mm. and um, when we did have some flow, um, some of the people that we would retain that just didn't show up for the work, <laughs> um, it just depends, I guess, on... I don't even know how to correct that or like we have very very good incentives and we offer a fairly good wage as far as I understand yeah so I'm um, not um, you know it'll come I think I think it's a I think it's just a, the industry itself like I've heard that from everybody and even the long-term care and I've heard that, so. that since COVID I do believe I think people have kind of stepped away mm -hmm. from it so but I, industry, like it's not just the health industry, it's everywhere from, my, from what I understand. Mm. The construction and even in, in my field and um, every everybody is just kind of, I don't know where they are, but they're, they've got to be somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle, I think. Yeah, people are, I think, places. Like it is hard to find yeah. that sort of surplus labor that you need. Yeah. to do that type of work. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty impossible, but I believe that, that there will be that capacity coming. So. Has that been the hardest part of starting this business the last couple of years? Um, I think the hardest part for me has been um, just the way, in, the way in which I kind of stepped forward through it. I think I had my heart before my head, Mm -hmm. um, to be quite honest, let me slap on my back, but um, I kind of jumped ahead and I bought a house and then I, then I had conversations with the local officials for planning and stuff. In hindsight, possibly maybe have done all the, the meeting and, and meeting of the building in the city prior to buying. Um, but the the opportunity was there for that property, so I had to do it. Um, so that has been a bit of a, a touch, touchy thing. Um, and there's, I mean, I'm no blaming or anything like that because I was the one that bought it in advance. Of so, but sort of interrupt. Did you say like slap yourself on the back for that? I don't think that that's something that you should be upset about. Every be entrepreneur ever who is successful <laughs> does things without doing thinking. the full planning. No, it's not thinking. <laughs> and I, I want to be careful not to say that because you are tackling something and there's a reason it doesn't exist. And we have all of these structures in place that really prevent it. Yet it's so needed that if you really think it out, most rational people wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yet to do it and get it done and make it work requires that kind of jumping in and figuring it out. So as much as there's like this yeah. idea to like, you know, hit yourself on the back, there's also just as good of a case to pat yourself on the back mm -hmm. and go into it. And I think it's just important to note that. Yeah. Like I work with people every day and most actual businesses that get started are not the ones that we talk about in textbooks. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, you, I don't think you can grow a business that sort of textbook way, 
uh, because you would just stop somewhere along the way. So, yeah, so, well, then, okay, having said that, then the two things that are kind of hard are the finances Mm -hmm. and, and the staffing. So one of the struggles right now is getting that stop gap. So self-funding, so working full-time at my other to fund and actually having some back funding in our back pocket to feed the business as it, as it grows. We're right at a pivotal spot right now where we're almost empty and needing a bit of a line of credit or a grant or something. The grants, you need to be revenue plus, mm-hmm. like... Uh, 500,000 plus like showing that you have that money um, in order to get a grant um, from what I understand and then and then um, we're just starting to come into some good funds Mm -hmm. but we also have a whole hiring thing and getting cell phones with people and doing so we have um, we have a bit of um capital outlay first right so um that from from the character side of things so we just have that stop gap that little little hiccup that we have for the next three months that we have to fund and then we're good like looking at my my projections we're, we're good um, yeah so i just have to find it <laughs> it's tricky too like if things were tough and then they became really good it's sometimes challenging when you get all that extra money or new money, like don't know what to do with it. Like, oh, this is great. Do I pay the line of credit? Do I pay down mm-hmm. some money it took me to get here? Am I taking this money? Am I hiring new people? Am I just going to take this money and celebrate and go on a trip? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's a hard thing to do too. So Yeah, I, I well, I can, yeah, yeah that is true because there's a lot of things to pay. <laughs> Yeah, you you kind of get into it, and that's the reality of like again the textbook way of like, oh, just do this and allocate it this way. It's not how you do it in real life. So you kind of have to get comfortable being very uncomfortable and going through these. I call them the sort of valleys of death, where you have these little um, periods of time where you know you need cash and it's not there. And you're kind of scratching and clawing yeah. through day to day. And, you know, I've worked with hundreds of businesses and I've seen that all the time. So you're it takes you're doing it something aside. that's normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take some and put it aside and then pay off the debt over uh, over a period, I think, would probably be. But there's no trips. I don't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hard thing. I've never talked about this or I've never really thought about it the idea of new money I joke like it's free money like a new project that drops on my lap but I often I'll get a new project and I'll turn to Brian and be like what do I do with this money now like where does it go there's like 10 different buckets it can go Yeah. what do I do with it and that's a challenge for me so I'm assuming it's a challenge for other people I don't think we ever think about money, just incoming money and cash flow can be challenging. Like, it's now, what do we do with it? Yeah. And you hear the stories, um, rumors or whatever, like people that get a bunch of money, they get a bunch of grant money, and they spend it all on nothing. Or you hire a bunch of people, and they can't back it up with the work, and it's just like, where did all that money go? And I don't want to be that story either, you know? <laughs> and that's yeah, you could watch, a, I've watched a lot of money just poof into nothing, yeah. Um, because it just, you know, sometimes having too much money is bad. Well, there's no problem not with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I don't have that. But. Or, yeah, too yeah. much too fast. Sure. Uh, and every business, there are some fundamentals. And I think, again, in business coaching, almost everyone wants to know, like, what is the right way to do it? Mm. And the, the hard truth is every business is different and requires different trade-offs and there's a journey you have to go through you know like matt when you're creating your business and what you do with that you know the bonus project and it's like oh what do i do like there's no right prescriptive answer that's going to guarantee anything i think there's a lot of wrong answers Mm -hmm. or there's a lot of things you could do that might hurt you later but partly that's why 
you get a coach to talk through those things because you're just managing a million things mm -hmm. all at once. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think it'll probably be a couple of years before we break even. Sure. But we see, in like, instead of it being in the negative, it's actually like a positive 20. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean, for the next few months after June. So, which is a blessing. So, I think that's a, that's a, a good thing. But... Um, you're right, like we'd have to forward focus on how we take that. I know there's a, you know, little things that we kind of want to do with the business, but whether it's the right thing to do or wrong thing to do. And the other thing is that you called it out was having the right staff in time for the clients or mm -hmm. vice versa, right? So yeah. you get, especially in this healthcare, you have clients come and go and all of a sudden, you know, we might lose two clients and all of a sudden we have extra staff and we don't have enough hours and we're running around trying to hire, so, uh, or get the clients and then vice versa, opposite. We get help, we have so many hours of clients and not enough staff, so it's like constant balancing. It's like kids. I used to think when they were little, like babies, I was wondering when it would get easier. It's never gotten easier. It's just new problems. It's different problems. And I'm the same way with my business. This morning, I was looking at setting up a new account that I started working on. And I was like, I don't know if I have days left in the month to give to this account, frankly. I so I was like piecing it together and like putting this map. And I'm like, okay, I, I talked to these people on this day and I mapped it all out. And I had like three days left of the month. And now they've taken one. I've got two days left. And is it a problem? Yes and no. It just changes how I'm doing things. Yeah, it changes how I'm operating. Yeah. It's a great problem to have, but it's like the way it's working right now is awesome, and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want it to change, but I'm going to have to get to a point where I'm like, I'm going to start making a bit more compromise or decisions and structurally how I do things. So it's a, it's, it's a new problem to have. Yeah, like, yeah, hiring. <laughs> um, there's certain, and we're working really hard on that and like giving different people different roles and stuff and I've probably been talking about this for two or three years now but like kind of at a critical point now of making sure like this has to change this way and like we're getting into a good routine the last couple months like I'm strategy I'm account management I talk to the people that I work with and then all the stuff just gets done in the background and we're getting really close to that yeah so but you have your hands on everything make sure it's good Yes, that's what I, like, I need to be involved, like, just before anything not goes out, but still I'm the last person that has to see it before it goes out, if that makes sense. So we're, like, really close. So actually, you know what, throughout this five-minute ramble, however, I actually feel a lot better about it because there are all yeah, you're doing an amazing job. I could, and I'm like, yeah, like, I, I just force more stuff down different streams, and, like, that does free stuff up. Because, like, the way I've been doing it for the last... Not even last year, it's only like last six months. Yeah. But I have like a dedicated day for every account that I work on. Except for some, I do two full days. So Purple House, every month, I have the whole day that I work on it. Other stuff happens the rest of the month, and it works out great. I come in, I'm like, hey, here's some like new ideas, opportunities. Get those with the right people. Talk to you. It's great. But that's what's going to have to change. Maybe it's not a full day, it's a half day. Anyways. So. Yeah. 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 Thanks for talking me through this. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. But yeah, it's like it's always new problems, and hopefully they're good. So. Yeah. And that's part of running a business. No, I know. I know. Um, and especially in the world you're getting into, you are competing with government, mm -hmm. which the government uh, does not really operate efficiently. Yet everyone who works there is programmed so much to operate efficiently and within certain structures so there's going to be certain things that they just are able to sort of out compete you on yeah. um, but you're jumping into that kind of ring and you're going to be managing those things and it you know it is all about clients and then the people who are your staff who are showing up to They're deliver sure. those services yeah and in your business, it's time sitting with those people. 
yep. is the key thing versus, you know, Matt's business. He could have a great idea in five minutes and be done for the day. And then other days it takes mm-hmm. him you know, six hours to come up with something that's good. Mm-hmm. It's harder to measure, but yeah, yours is very active and you need the people to show up I to make yes. the money. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that's, yeah, the challenge. Yeah. If people know show, then that's a problem. <laughs> it's hard what you're doing too, because like Brian said, there's old ways that this was done. Mm-hmm. It was through government or it was the private person that's doing it. And people don't like either. People don't want government because it's spending too much and the private person doing it, like, they're going to not want to spend a whole lot because they're trying to make more money and greed all around. And I think about it a lot with, um, like, the housing crisis or whatever, too. Like, I don't I'm not smart enough to know what the right answer is there. Do you want government doing subsidized housing that's going to turn into gosh knows what? Or do you want, you can't convince a developer to build a building and then sell it for a certain price. There's no right or wrong answer here, yeah. which is really scary. <laughs> yeah, it's layered and layered in structure and money and yeah, we I I could dive into it because I think about it and dive into it a lot, but we, we won't for this podcast. Yeah. But you're dealing with the same thing. I think one of the benefits in the business you're getting into is the government has cut care so much that it opens up the um, need for private Mm -hmm. care, but then you come across the people aren't used to paying for that Mm -hmm. because government has taken care of it. So the idea of paying anything is something that they have to overcome, but once you overcome that, then you can, you know, operate a service that gets delivered. And that one of the things that that we do is like that that was how I created it that was why I created it because for the government for my parents they funded it an hour a week and they would come in at a half an hour time at their choosing so <laughs> they would call at like 11.30 in the morning and say we're going to be here in half an hour and then they, would, they wouldn't know what they were supposed to do with my dad my yeah. dad was sundowning so he he needed the care in the evening because it was causing my mom a bit of stress right um and they weren't, th- they weren't there. So I needed to have someone in there. Um, the other thing that the, the private pay others would do would have a four-hour minimum, admin fees, mm-hmm. mileage, and all these other hidden fees in the contracts. So our business would be, we have a flat rate, 45 bucks an hour. We don't charge you the mileage. We are not doing minimums. Um, we work with you and find out what you're what your needs are we have a registered staff that will provide a plan of care we won't just throw someone in Mm -hmm. we'll actually sit down and work out what you need that's cool and we work every three months and we're every three or six months however we agree on and we'll come back and check because nothing is stagnant right your care is not stagnant Mm -hmm. and then the other aspect that's different from us is that we can work now with provider connect which is green shield and some other um, insurance pop, um, mm-hmm. programs, and the other one is um, that we're learning about how to get tax credits. So mm-hmm. you as a care provider have a spouse that is um, not well, and you have to care for them or you have to get some service like us in, then we'll help you try and fill out the forms mm-hmm. and, uh, and help you with tax time, which is an added service that we can look to provide that's super useful because i have thought about this from going to the autism support groups right where you get there and they just dump forty thousand pieces of paper in front of you and they're like hey here are all these resources and definitions and all this stuff and i'm frankly leaving money on the table because there is government support out for that for being a caregiver of someone with autism and i think about it once every couple months i'm like oh shoot that would be kind of cool to have and it would be nice though if someone kind of frankly came to me and was like hey there's like there's money out there you should go get it here's how you do it that's exactly so that's one of the things and especially with the the senior crowd they don't know my mom did mom and dad didn't know that my dad could get the ostomy supplies Mm. for free if they filled in a form every two years Mm. all the money came back 
So they were spending like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And all they had to do was fill in the form, get the doctor to sign saying that he legit has a stoma. Yeah. And he gets all the money back every two years. Yeah. So, and it goes right into their bank account. And I filled it in for them. So, so the, that metal, like the new person that we hire, get her working on that, see what we can do, and sit down with people like you and yeah. try and fill out those forms. And that's an added service that we can provide. It's an interesting idea, too, just to be promoting, like, we can help you fund this service mm-hmm. and, like, push them in the right direction, too. They didn't know they needed it. No. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, no. the, did like okay, you know that this exists, but did you know that we, you could get funding for it? Yeah. That's pretty cool, too. Yeah. So that's something that we're, we've been brainstorming in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. trying to figure out a way just to generate m- more kind of noise yeah yeah the hours have picked up though the hours have picked up but then like like you say like we're not we're not like everybody else charging minimums and yeah. mileage and all that stuff so we need to have mm-hmm. a certain minimum of yeah in order to make back what we're spending out so that's where we're trying to figure out how we can have added value where we can entice people to come in um, because we do want to we do want to pay. We do want to help the people that need the help, but we also want to help the people that are helping the people. Yeah. Like the, staff, <laughs> the staff. We really want to make sure there's a low turnover. And um, you've seen it. I've experienced it. Uh, the turnover in healthcare is like they'll go wherever they need to go to get the jobs. Doesn't matter whether they, they've been with you 30 years or 10 or 5 or not even a day. So. Yeah, it's like the grass is always greener somewhere, and there's always, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a tough problem to solve, and you really have to look at what you need to do to attract and retain yeah. the right people, and then align that with the clients that you need. It's, yeah, not an easy thing you're tackling, <laughs> so I give you credit. <laughs> yeah, and you have to remind yourself it's you're doing hard things. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a reason why... Others aren't really doing it yeah. that much. Yeah. And then we go through these cycles where once you get really good at it, I was just reading a thing about you know a lot of private equity firms buy companies like that, and then they mm. you know increase the fees and they kind of drive Change in all these operation things, and then it goes through a cycle where then it leaves room for someone else to come in and try to uh, compete with them. So. Yeah. To kind of imagine it and run it how you want to run it and know that it's hard and other people haven't done it, you know, just remind yourself yeah. that you're doing <laughs> you're doing good things. So oh, That's what coaches and I found groups that were really, really, really good at, though, of, like, setting expectations and telling you what Brian just said. Like, yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be hard. Like, what you're doing is hard. He's told me that for a couple of years, and it took a while, but now it helps. <laughs> Yeah. To understand, like, oh, yeah, this was hard what we were doing. Yeah. And we did a good job at it. And, like, it's still new. Yeah, it Most of the stuff everybody's doing in this room, even, is still new. Yeah. Like, where we'll be in five years, ten years, is going to be very different and positively. We just have to hustle through it. Not hustle through it. Grind through it in so many ways. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a yeah. grind. you got to take care of yourself along the way. Like, I remind myself all the time doing things that are hard and you're driving towards a future vision that other people don't don't have mm-hmm. right or they don't see or they just want it to exist and they want someone else to do it um, yeah. and these are hard challenging things um, and you're also building it the way you want to do it which yeah. is you know like Matt right the way he wants to work and what his family <laughs> needs from a business you are building and designing a marketing business that's different from every other marketing business. Mm-hmm. And you're building and designing Purple House to offer what, you know, the care that you wished was available for you. Yeah. And nobody else is doing it that exact same way. Yeah, um, for sure. So you're in the fight. I'm in, creating I'm in the fight. I'm in it. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't get easy, right? There's this myth sometimes that, oh, you just like open up your business and 
get some freedom the next day and can like work from the beach, but that's not go golfing. Not yeah. how it yeah. goes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I think that's what my husband was thinking. Just don't that. Up. Yeah, mm-hmm. make a bit of money and I can golf all the time. Yeah. I think that's a big myth I've learned in the last couple of years, too. People look at you and they even expect certain things of you because you're a business owner, which means you're rich. Like, that's the furthest yeah. thing from the truth. Yeah. <laughs> the poorest man on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> unless, you, unless you won the 70 million. Yeah. Like, somebody does. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But, so. yeah, no, I agree wholeheartedly. It's, it's, uh, you, have, you have to take your wax as a small business owner. And everyone's got a different situation, but I do see it sometimes. Businesses will close like not even a year into it. I'm like, you guys haven't even gotten started. It's too early, you know. Like you got to grind through that. You got to get going. But yeah, everyone's it, got a different situation. It's hard. I think we get disenchanted when we have an idea mm-hmm. and then we want it to work right away because you could envision it built. And you can see it, yeah. You you could see it, but there's this race, and you know I don't know a lot about your business, but I can guess a whole bunch of things. You know, there's a race to get to a scale that you need to be at mm-hmm. for it to break even, and there's no magic way to get to that space. Like that's part of the risk of entrepreneurship is investing in in that, and every business, you know. There's like the old adage, it takes twice as long and twice as much money as what you think. And it's probably more than that. But you have to go with something and and stick with it. And, you know, you might need to pivot a little bit along the way. But, you know, as Matt said, the people who just give up after a year, um, or sometimes it's not even a year, it's like a couple months. Yeah. And, or they haven't even actually tried anything it's like i have this idea and no one has guessed it that i have this idea and given me money yet so they get discouraged and they walk away and they, they walk away yeah. yeah you told me one yesterday i'm not going to say anything but just speak vaguely of it was a bad idea and then he ran it for what two or three months and then closed up shop like that would, never was going to work probably but two or three months you didn't give it any chance at all right. so yeah yeah, it's uh, yeah, funny how that stuff works. And, and in your business specifically, just the client journey of becoming aware that you exist to the point where I'm going to give you money to care for my loved one who is in a vulnerable position requires a lot of trust and relationship yeah. building. And, you know, that takes more than, like one social media post or that's correct yeah it, it takes a journey and you have to you know you have to invest in taking people through that journey uh, but then once you build to that scale and people start talking about it you know then it becomes um, a lot easier because you know there's just more authority and trust that's built and we've hired two new staff because of one client Mm. we've received one client from another client and they're they're good clients and i'm hoping that that will will carry forward so um yeah so hopefully we will be able to grow um organically that way as well as with the social media and the because that is that is key word of mouth as well as you know word of mouth helps but then you know as matt would say someone tells me about something the first thing i do is i get on my keyboard or i start going look and i want to read up about it and if it's a say a family and it's you know you have one sibling who's the lead caregiver and they have to tell their other caregivers about what they're thinking of doing they need to direct them somewhere so you know you need to have that content and you know marketing stuff available for all of these people who are part of those decisions. <laughs> yeah, they want, they want <laughs> testimonials because it is a big, like, it's a big ask. Like, come into my home. You're and take coming care of into my home and taking care of. Or I'm going to move into your home yeah. at Purple House Bob's Place and, and I'm going to entrust you with the care of my 
loved one. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's, a, very that's a big decision. Yeah. Right. And, and I don't take it lightly, like, because that's what I wanted to do with my parents. So, mm-hmm. like, that's, I wanted to put them in a house, not an institution. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that was key. Yeah, that's uh, incredible. Awesome. Any final thoughts? How do the people find you? You're going to go to www.purplehouse. I'm stalling because I don't know if it's services or if it's just purplehouse.ca. Purplehouseservices.ca. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> go on the website, book a call, book a consultation. Learn a little bit about them. Like Brian said, I joke that no one wants to give me money for marketing, but nobody wants to give anybody money to take care of their loved one either. It's even harder. So get on that website, learn a bit about you, start to build that trust and familiarity, talk to Kelly, see what you're doing differently, and start that journey. Yeah, we've got an amazing team. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And that is our show. Matt, how do the people find you and what do you want them to know? Go to mattygdigital.com and book a call. Awesome. And I'm Brian, and you can get me at profitcoach.ca. And if you want to be on the podcast, you can reach out to us at setitup at Podcast.ca.